Hi, everyone. Today, Sam and I are in the mood for coloring. Come on and join us. All right, Susie. Let's see what new things you know that I don't know yet. Oh, Sammy, get ready to be impressed. Whoosh. Ah, you want me to work on the same picture? Okay, then. Not quite yet, actually. Whoa! <laughs> Hold on to your hat, Mr. Great Artist. But why do you need a scalpel? We are going to make a kind of stencil from this sketch. Remember to always be careful with sharp objects, guys, and try to work neatly, of course. There's no need to cut out everything, just the few most remarkable elements. I wonder where this is going. Ugh. Give us a thumbs up if you do too, guys! Okay, the brows, the eyes, and the lips are done. And we don't need this big part as well. Whoop. Now we will simply put our stencil on top of our sketch. This way. Uh-huh! The cutout parts perfectly align with the same elements on the sketch! That's right! And just to be safe, let's secure the whole thing with paper clips. Here we go! Shiver me chatters, I think I got it! Now we're gonna simply paint those parts with a brush, right? Well, you've got the point! Only instead of a paintbrush, we'll use this. Shiver me chatters! This is gonna be fun! What do you say about all of these colors? Looking cool, huh? Holy cannoli! Let me come up closer! Alright, you can proceed now, Sue! <laughs> Let's roll! Now, Sammy, check this out! I bet it wasn't as boring for you as simple coloring would have been, huh? Are you kidding me? That was awesome! I wonder what else you've got up your sleeve. Ooh. The next in our coloring workshop is this young lady. Huh! She's too blurry to be colored with the paint roller, don't you think so? You're right. This time, we're gonna do some sketching. The best part of this technique, guys, is that you don't have to be too precise. Just place your marker against the paper and create. Use any colors that you want. Switch the width of the lines you're drawing by switching the chisel tip to the brush tip and back. Wow, what knowledge! The chisel tip will work best for the eyebrows if we use it like this. Up, 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 up. We can even add some shades and mix colors. Here we go. Okay, Sue, I want to try to do that too. Ah, what a bright color! Awesome! Ha, ah, I love that! Sammy? Where'd you go? I've got a terrific idea, Sue! Finish that sketch without me! Oh! <laughs> Sammy and his ideas! And there is even more yet to come! Sammy, we're waiting here! Ah, oh, come on, where did he go? Oh. What? Where did this come from? Oh, sorry, Sue, I had to run to the hardware store. And why exactly did you get this? Please don't tell me that your idea was to paint the walls in your room again. Actually, uh, yeah, the walls do bother me. But that's not the point! Better check this out! Are these watercolors? But I thought we were going with unusual coloring today. Stop being suspicious and make the big paintbrush rainbowy already! Okay, okay. In that case, the red color comes first. Guys, you can use any colors you want! While we prefer the Roy G. Biv palette. You know it, right? Well done, Susie! Now just make one nice diagonal stroke. Your wish is my command. Here we go. 
Guys, would you look at this? Amazing! See? I told you, my idea was brilliant! That's true. I really like this picture. Do you guys? Then give us a thumbs up. But how about something a little bit more complicated? Like a trip to Paris, for example. Super me chadels! Should I go packing? <laughs> no, I'm gonna need your help here. Let's give this girl a remarkable hairdo. We need this. We're also gonna use a sponge brush like this one. And acrylic paints of our favorite colors. By the way, guys, we love painting and coloring. And there are a bunch of videos about that on our channel. Oh, you should totally check them out. Ooh. All right, people, let's get started. The paint should just go straight through the stencil. Light and fast touches will seal the deal. An important thing here is to work sequentially. Sue is doing the very first layer. And I'm gonna make the second one! We'll carefully take the first stencil off of our picture and let it dry. Only after that can we move on to the next step. Roses are red, violets are blue. Slime Sam with a sponge a great picture can do! <laughs> you see? Easy peasy. Nice poem, Sammy. And well done with these clouds and a moon. But we've got to move forward. There are three more layers to go. Nice it must be to feel the wonderful city of Paris in your hair. You don't say, Sammy. Now this little Eiffel Tower will help us finish a few tiny details. And that's it. Watercolors will help us out with the makeup. And voila! A wonderful French lady portrait is finished. Oh, Champs-Élysées! Oh, Champs-Élysées! And if you want to know what's gonna come next over here, then you had better stay with us, don't go anywhere! Welcome back, guys. And here's one more girl without a hairdo so far. What are we gonna draw in her hair? New York? London? Tokyo? <laughs> Actually, this time we'll go with some sparkly glitter. But first, we need to draw the outline of her hairdo with glue. Here we go. Ooh, I'm gonna go get all the sparkles for my secret stash! I know Sammy loves shiny things. <laughs> Guys, you don't have to really be precise here. And by the way, you can make anything else sparkly on this portrait. I'm gonna add some glue on the girl's lips as well. Who's ready to see my precious collection of glitter? Haha! -ha. Wow, Sammy, you really brought everything you had. And note that not everything is pink. Here. <laughs> well, in that case, I want to start with the darkest hue. Here we go. Guys, you know that you can totally follow your inspiration with this craft, right? Oh, yeah. Get creative, and you will get a one of a kind, very beautiful, and sparkly portrait. Susie, do you mind? A little bit over here, and just a pinch right there. I like this type of art. <laughs> Oh, I really like how this portrait turned out. Holy cannoli! But you're not saying that we're done here, right? I want to keep coloring! <laughs> there is one more technique that I've been long wanting to try. You should protect your tables for this, guys. Meet our last girl. Ooh, she looks like a girl I knew back in Tibidaba. Wait a second. Is that all drawn in a single line? Yup, cool, right? Awesome! In a few minutes, We'll try to repeat it in one single line as well. But first, let's prepare this special watercolor paper for the coloring. 
The secret is not to spare the water, because watercolors really love it. That's why, before you start working, you should secure your picture against the table with double-sided tape. And that part is done. Now we're just going to apply different watercolors onto the paper, creating a few random splashes and blots, like this. We'll use a brush to kind of direct the way they smear. Ah, that's a very professional color blending, Suzanne. <laughs> Thank you. Now it's time for my personal challenge. Just make sure that everything's dry before you do this, guys. Why don't we let Sue finish her last piece of art for today? And in a couple of seconds, we will take a look at everything! Hi guys, and welcome to our drawing and coloring workshop! Try and guess what I'm drawing here? This magic creature will grow a beautiful mane in quite a bit. But for now, let's draw a little eye so that it could see us. Here goes a cute little ear and a rather long and strong neck. Does it look like a horse, huh? We will add this decor piece just to make this creature happier. Uh-huh. And now, check this out. One, two, three, and a magic horn. I'm sure you've guessed what we're drawing here right away. Unicorns are my favorite fairy tale creatures. They are so beautiful. Oh, look! This little guy is winking at you. <laughs> he likes what we're drawing here. Did you know that unicorns can run really fast? That's because of their strong legs. Here's a couple of them. Now let's draw the front legs. Don't forget about the hooves. Hop and hop. Unicorns don't usually go too far from rainbows. Ours will have one right on the background. Now that this drawing is almost complete, we need to make the lines more visible. Just take a wide marker and outline everything that you've drawn. Wow, that's a real magic! <laughs> I guess our unicorn wants us to start with the purple color. <laughs> well, I don't mind at all. I love purple. Do you? It's important to stay in between the lines, so paint carefully. So this part is almost done. Why don't we make this one purple as well? This will look beautiful. A few more touches. And the next color is… What do you think? What do you think? Whoosh! Cyan! Oh, it really reminds me of the most wonderful things there are. Like the sky and the water in the ocean. It just feels like summer to me. Let's paint this part of the main cyan as well. It really looks good being next to purple, right? But we need one more color here. What's it gonna be? <gasps> Bright pink! Of course! Unicorns adore this color, I know! Do you like it? What color is your favorite? Hmm, I agree! I like it too! Ooh, we've got a heart spot here! I'm gonna do my best to make it colorful! Well, Mr. Unicorn, would you conjure the next color, please? Wow, it's yellow! It reminds me of a sour lemon. <laughs> or a sweet lemon cake. 
Let this neck piece be yellow as well. Or should I rather say gold? Once, I had a pendant in the shape of a unicorn's head. I knew that it could bring good luck to me and make my wishes come true. Let's see if the unicorns can still do that for me. I wish the prettiest color to be next. Hey, it worked! <laughs> Usually people draw unicorns white, but I want this one to be extraordinary. This color that is called magenta will do that trick. Be careful around the eye. Oh, that's right. Close it for a bit, Mr. Unicorn. <laughs> what a smart creature you are. I always wanted to meet a real unicorn when I was a little girl. Now it feels like a dream come true. <laughs> Just a few more touches and the neck will be finished. I like how it's turning out so far. And we're moving on to the unicorn's body. Even though this part of our picture is quite big, I prefer not to switch my paintbrush to a wider one. It is just more comfortable for me. And this way, I make more or less even strokes all the way around this painting. Here goes one more leg. You know, even though there are some rules in painting and coloring, still the most important one is to have fun during the process. The next color is brown! For the hoops, of course! <laughs> We'll make them bright and our beautiful unicorn will be able to run as fast as the wind! <laughs> I'm sure this unicorn could outrun any ordinary horse in the world. Do you agree with me, guys? Hmm, I wonder if riding a unicorn is the same as horseback riding? I guess we'll never know, huh? Is it just me or is the paint about to change its color? Purple it is! <laughs> we nearly forgot about our unicorn's tail! It should be no less beautiful than its mane. So why don't we make the center of it whoosh! Orange! What do you say? I really like how orange matches with purple. Such a bright palette! Now that our unicorn is perfectly colorful, it's time for us to deal with the background. And this time, I'm going to work with markers. Firstly, because this way the unicorn will show up better. And secondly, I love coloring with markers. <laughs> there is one important thing, though. You should make all of the strokes in the same direction. See? This way the picture will be more beautiful. Okay, next we'll take… The light green marker. Guys, do you know the proper order of the colors of the rainbow? I'm sure you do. That's why you might have noticed that I've decided not to follow it this time. I want to create my own rainbow and so could you. Just get creative and set your imagination free. After the grass green comes golden yellow. Just check out how differently the unicorn begins to look on a bright background, right? I'm gonna use orange next. It reminds me of both sunrise and sunset, the two spectacular things I enjoy watching. I'm sure you like them too, guys. Now comes this part of the rainbow. And we're at the finish line. Just a few more strokes here and there. And here comes the last color for today. It kind of looks like a tasty berry. Mmm. Here we go. Hey, look at that! Our Mr. Unicorn even closed his eye imagining the berry I was talking about. <laughs> or maybe he's fallen asleep? In that case, have the sweetest dreams, little magic creature. See you in our next episode, guys! Bye-bye! Hi, guys! Today we're gonna make a very unusual painting! The result will surprise you! Susan, are you 
pretty sure we need such a big canvas. Don't worry, Sammy. Everything is thought through. Go, I need space. Ugh. Well, you would know. Ugh. But I bet you need this. Thanks. Your help is always right on time. And the main thing in every painting are paints. Er, uh, I need this too. And this. I really like to draw with acrylic paint. Yes, they're so bright. You said we won't need brushes, so I bought some Q-tips. I like it. You're right. It's possible to draw with Q-tips. Have you seen the video on our channel, guys? I strongly recommend you watching it. Trust me, you won't regret this. So, Sue, are we gonna use them or not? This time, we won't need Q-tips either. Sue, if it's not a sponge, I don't know what to bring. Think more, Sammy. Uh, is it a painter's brush then? Nope, I'll be drawing with my own fingers. The cool thing about paint is that you can mix any color you want using only red, yellow, and blue. Susan, what about protection? I'm guessing there will be paints everywhere. Guys, if you're not sure your hands are firm enough, you should put on an apron. But you're gonna be careful, right, Sue? The real masters don't need protection. Let's get started. We can even take two portions in one movement. Minimum ingredients and maximum results. Right, Sue? Correct. <laughs> but what if you need to change the color? What should you do? As always, you just need to change the brush. <laughs> Let's draw a face. It's very easy. Considering the colors, I can conclude it's a scarlet macaw! Wow, Sammy! How did you know? I'm really impressed. I'm full of surprises, Sue. You may not know this, but I'm an experienced bird watcher. <laughs> Where did you get so much time for all of your hobbies? I'm able to look at two different things simultaneously, like a scarlet macaw can. Wow, I could use this skill when I need to do my homework but I want to watch a movie. Guys, stay tuned if you want to know what's next. So it's my napkin! Sam calling Sue over! Guys, I need your answer! Do you copy? Oh, I got carried away. Sorry. Oh, guys, would you look at how beautifully these two colors are mixing together? A quick life hack for you guys. If your paint is too thick, you can dilute it with water. But if it's too runny, you can mix it with talcum. And talcum. Okay, I got it! I need to write that down. Sammy, maybe you want to try this too? But you're doing so great there! Guys, just look at those precise movements! If we mix blue and white colors, we'll get light blue. This will add some volume and brightness. Sue, how do you like my new image? I probably should look the part. You want to make life brighter as I see. It seems like I'm petting a canvas as if it's a hamster. <laughs> yeah, Coffee's worried that we could bring a parrot like this one home. I guess you need this. Thanks! You always take care of me. What would I do without you? I just don't want our painting to look dirty, Sue! Oh, really? <laughs> Sue, stop! Jokes aside, we need to finish this craft! Okay, why don't we add some dark hues at the sides like this? Well, Sammy, it's just clay. You can try that. Shiver me jitters! How do they actually eat this? Sammy, what are you saying? Clay is inedible! But I read that scarlet macaws eat clay! Ugh! Yes, to neutralize plant poisons, they have special ferments for it. Thank Jibadaba I'm not a scarlet macaw then. <laughs> mm. 
Guys, we're at the finish line. We'll see the result very soon. All we have left is to draw the bird's body and tail. The technique is absolutely the same. We take some paint and make strokes. Sue, make room for me. I'm checking out the place. Sammy, go away. You don't understand. I heard that you need to buy a really big cage for a scarlet macaw. Sammy, no. We've already discussed it. We're not going to buy a scarlet macaw. But it's so cute. Pretty please. Sue, let's have one. I'll draw our parrot a tail and it's not going to be so sad not having him at home. You're right. We already have so many pets. I don't want them to get jealous. Phew! That was close. <laughs> Sue! Did you know that there are so many macaw species and they are all so bright? Great green, blue and yellow, blue-throated. I want to draw them all! I think Sammy's really enjoying making parrot crafts. Don't worry, Sammy. Now you have the technique, so you can draw whatever macaw you want. Guys, by the way, you don't need to copy me. You can choose your favorite colors for this craft. There are so many beautiful birds in the world that we need to make a schedule. Let's see. Well, we could draw a colibri on this day. Here, we'll draw a swan. And this day, maybe a sparrow. Oh, wait. No, let it be a mandarin duck. Oh, Sammy and his vivid imagination. Oh, Sue, how's it going with the painting? We're almost done. I bet the guys can't wait to see the result. I think red will look great on the tail. If you agree, give us a thumbs up, guys. Painting with your fingers is a great way to spend time with your friends and parents. Sue, can you sew me a hat? I need it. Is it a dress-up day today? I'm just trying to find a proper outfit for a Parisian exhibition. What? An exhibition in Paris? When is it going to be? We've got to draw a lot of paintings then. Then you take care of the drawings and I'll choose the outfit. In the meantime, we're making the last touches. Here we go. Woohoo! Guys, it's finally ready. I'm so happy. I totally love this drawing. Wow, that's really something. Guys, do you want to see our beautiful craft in all its glory? Then follow me!